This video is about the all new air source boiler. The air source boiler is a part of a family of heat recovery products available from advanced industrial refrigeration. You can check out my other videos for more information on how these other products help with building electrification and decarbonization. Air source heating is becoming increasingly popular, especially for large commercial and institutional buildings where hot water is typically generated for heating purposes. Although air source heat pumps have been used for decades in mild climates, the industry has been facing issues with the technology in colder climates. Generally, hot water production has an upper limit of 140 Fahrenheit, and this is derated sometimes below 110 Fahrenheit as the outdoor temperature drops. This is the exact opposite correlation that's desirable. The defrost cycle is often the Achilles heel of these systems. A defrost cycle which is not tuned properly causes the compressor to switch back and forth from heating to cooling, causing excessive wear and premature compressor failure. Many of the commercially available reversing type heat pumps are less efficient in cooling mode when compared to conventional air-cooled chillers, for example. Many products on the market don't meet ASHRAE 90.1 efficiency standards when in cooling mode. Lastly, in cold climates, the heat load is often the deciding factor when sizing these systems. That means there's a lot more space needed for air source heating equipment. The air source boiler was designed to overcome these issues found in most air source heat pumps. Because it's a dedicated heating only device, it can be optimized for cold climates where heating is critical. It's available in two different flavors. The high ambient version, which is capable of 170 Fahrenheit hot water, the temperature derates with ambient and its operation stops around 5 Fahrenheit. Then there is a low ambient version, which can produce 130 degree hot water, but it can maintain this temperature across the board down to minus 20 Fahrenheit and below. And these machines are typically used for space heating applications and domestic hot water heating applications. So how does the air source boiler have such a wide operational envelope? It has to do with a combination of refrigerant and compressor types. Most other air source heat pumps on the market are essentially an air-cooled chiller with a reversing valve thrown into it. They use R410A refrigerant or some similar performing low GWP formulation. Using a scroll compressor in an R410A, you can see that the end of the compressor map is around zero Fahrenheit suction. This gets you to an ambient condition of about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Below this temperature, many air source heat pumps use hot gas injection where refrigerant is recirculated around the compressor in order to keep it running. This results in a massive reduction in capacity and efficiency. It's no wonder why R410A is not commonly used in food and other cold storage applications because it's not well suited for low temperature or low suction temperature conditions. The second map is for R507 refrigerant. You can see the same data point at zero Fahrenheit suction, for example. There is a tremendous amount of room for lower suction temperatures, even below minus 20. This refrigerant and compressor combination is much better suited for extracting heat from very cold ambient temperatures. One thing that makes air source heating a unique challenge is that its efficiency and capacity degrade with a drop in ambient temperature. The top graph shows the efficiency or COP versus ambient and the lower graph shows capacity. In this example you can see that the heating capacity drops from about 800 MBH to 400 MBH as the ambient drops from 40 down to zero degrees. Thought must be given when determining the design condition. This depends on whether the system is 100% supplied with air source heat or if it contains some kind of supplemental heating as well. We discussed that the supply temperature of an air source boiler 
declines with ambient, often down to 110 Fahrenheit or even lower. This is usually not enough to provide adequate heating in cold climates. Therefore, a common workaround is to introduce a supplemental boiler, gas or electric in a side stream configuration like shown. This boiler will increase the supply temperature when the air source heat pumps are running. When it gets really cold outside, the air source heat pumps often need to shut down entirely and the side stream boiler must handle 100% of the load. The air source boiler, on the other hand, does not have a substantial D rate in its operational temperature. The low ambient version can provide 130 degree hot water supply down to minus 20 and below. This reduces the likelihood of needing top up heat energy. Instead, the conventional boiler can be installed in parallel as shown for backup purposes only. Because the air source boiler can run at such cold ambient conditions, the boiler does not need to handle 100% of the load. Being piped in parallel also means we're not continuously pumping fluid through this boiler as well. Now we're going to talk about the defrost cycle. As I mentioned, the defrost cycle is the Achilles heel of air source heating. This is a typical refrigeration cycle, including compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. If you want to learn more about refrigeration, you can check out my Refrigeration 101 video. In this instance, the evaporator is the outdoor air coil and the condenser is being used to generate the hot water we need for the building. In a conventional air source heat pump, reversing valve is installed as shown. This allows the unit to operate in heating mode, for example, here where the hot gas discharge is diverted to the condenser to produce hot water and the compressor suction is coming out of the evaporator or the outdoor coil. For the defrost cycle, the system is reversed. This is also the same for the cooling cycle for these machines. Heat is extracted from the building hydronic system as the condenser becomes the evaporator and the heat is then rejected into the condenser. In this case, it is the outdoor air coil. That outdoor air coil heats up and the ice on that coil begins to melt. This reversing valve system has major implications in terms of the hydronic design of the system and occupant comfort. In heating mode, the air source heat pump is adding the required amount of heat to the system. However, when we go into defrost mode, the air source heat pump is removing heat from the system. Although heat is being used to melt ice on the outdoor coil, the building loop begins to cool. Occupant comfort is compromised because the hydronic loop begins to cool. Additionally, we need to make sure that the hydronic loop does not become too cold. If the air source heat pump goes back into heating mode, when the loop is too cold, it can lead to inadequate head pressure for the refrigeration system, which can damage the compressor. This solution typically needs a large buffer tank to act as thermal storage. It's often equivalent to 10 minutes of flow or more, depending on the situation. That means if your flow rate is 100 gallons a minute, you would need a 1000 gallon storage tank to handle a 10 minute defrost cycle. The air source boiler eliminates the need for any of that. Instead, the air source boiler uses a hot gas defrost cycle. In this system, a portion of hot gas is diverted from the compressor discharge into the evaporator with the control valve. This raises the temperature and pressure of the evaporator just enough to melt ice. During this time, the compressor stays running continuously. Additionally, the air source boiler has two independent refrigeration circuits and the outdoor coils or the evaporator is physically partitioned into two independent sections. This allows the machine to stagger defrost on each circuit, further reducing any loss in capacity during the cycle. No heat from the building is extracted in order to melt ice on the evaporator.
the air source boiler is able to make reliable hot water in the coldest of climates. It has a high supply water temperature, which does not degrade with ambient. That means it's often possible to design systems without a side stream boiler for top up heat. The air source boiler can operate well at extremely low ambient temperatures, minus 20 Fahrenheit and below, whereas many other air source heat pumps have to shut off somewhere between five and 15 degrees. This means the air source boiler can continue to operate offering more hours of decarbonization and there is no need to switch to an entirely different heating systems in cold climates. The reliable hot gas defrost system, which has been used for decades, allows for efficient defrost cycles without harming the compressor. Hot gas defrost eliminates the need for large hydronic storage tanks. Because all of its components are optimized for heating, the physical size of the air source boiler ends up being 25 to 50 percent smaller than comparable air source heat pumps. The lower the design ambient temperature, the greater the advantage the air source boiler will have over conventional air source heat pumps. I hope you enjoyed this session on learning more about the air source boiler. It's just one part of the many decarbonization and electrification products AIR has to offer. And you're welcome to watch our other videos on these other products as well.